The biggest crimes to rock Kansas City. A pharmacist who diluted tens of thousands of prescriptions. Prosecutors say Robert Courtney did it for greed. Families say Courtney is responsible for hundreds, if not thousands, of deaths. It was all exposed back in 2001. But now, Robert Courtney is getting out of federal prison early. It's prompted our investigative team to take a deeper look at this case and reveal how Courtney was finally caught. Here's investigative reporter Angie Ricono. Pharmacist Robert Courtney pleads guilty to diluting cancer medicine. I'm Russell Kinsall. Kansas City was stunned, heartbroken, even angry. I hope he'll have a long life of intense agony. Old news footage reveals the pain. My life is, will never be the same. For some, it's fresh even today. When you explain to people how your dad died, what do you say? Do you say it's the cancer? The cancer didn't kill him. Robert Courtney killed him. Kat describes her dad, Harry Duncan, as a big teddy bear. He had cancer, but doctors were confident he would beat it. It was so weird to see him get small, you know. Chemotherapy didn't work. Just a year later, federal investigators said they knew why. They told us that dad was given like less than 1% of what he should have got, you know, so he was given nothing. Nothing like this had ever happened before. Not in Kansas City, not anywhere. What if what everybody's saying is true? Daryl Ashley was a pharmaceutical rep for Eli Lilly. He sold a new chemotherapy drug called Jimzar. It promised fewer side effects, but information from nurses at a local doctor's office was remarkable. No one was getting sick. The results were almost too good to be true. A nurse would, would say, you, you should be excited because we're using so much of your drug. But the numbers didn't add up. We got to just take a look at this here. Daryl Ashley tried to make sense of it for months. He eventually voiced his suspicions to nurses inside Dr. Verda Hunter's oncology office. Guys, based on what you're telling me and the information I'm getting from my company, he may be deluding. If I'm right, there's something deadly wrong here. If I'm wrong and he's not doing it, I just hurt a man's career. Hey, Dave. Yeah. You know how many calls we've gotten on the hotline so far? Even the FBI questioned if something this awful was truly possible. I thought that this could have been an, an error on the pharmacist or a mistake. Retired FBI agent Melissa Osborne worked the case. She's also a pharmacist. She encouraged a sting operation. Agents through an oncologist bought chemotherapy from Courtney. It was tested in under 24 hours. All of the covert purchases had anywhere from, I think, about around 28, 30% down to almost 0%, just a mere trace, basically nothing. Courtney's pharmacy was raided and shut down. He initially admitted that he had diluted these medications for a small number of patients for several months because he had made a pledge to his church for a million dollars and he also had a very high tax bill and he needed a little bit of extra money. Osborne says Courtney's bank accounts and investments revealed 19 million dollars. Today that would be the equivalent of 33 million dollars. A huge red flag that this was bigger than anyone could have imagined. This is Frank Carey from the FBI in Kansas City. So the FBI set up a hotline calling for patients to step forward. Nobody's called back yet. It was a public health crisis. Eventually, Courtney took a plea deal. He'd served 30 years and admit what he did. It was a tough deal for patients and families. They had the man for 180 years to begin with, and then they started this flea bargain. In the end, Courtney admitted to diluting 72 medications for over 4,200 patients, affecting more than 98,000 prescriptions. It wasn't just cancer medication. It was prescriptions for fertility treatments, diabetes, AIDS, and even eye drops. We're looking at greed because there's a lot of money involved in these medications, and he agreed with that. But then there were some medications that he actually tampered with that were like $5. What was Courtney's personality like when you're, when you're talking to him? How would you describe him? I truly believe he is a monster. I believe he's a sociopath. He really had no remorse. He really never thought that he would be caught. I think his only remorse was that he was caught. Today, Courtney is 71 years old. 
He's getting out of prison early. He'll be on home confinement. Harry Duncan's daughter, Kat, can't believe it. I hate him, okay? I'm just gonna be honest, I hate him. And I know you're supposed to forgive people. It's not gonna happen. So how does Robert Courtney get out of prison? We'll take a closer look at the First Step Act tomorrow night. That's new federal legislation to help release overcrowding in prisons. Some nonviolent criminals qualify. The question for many is, how does Robert Courtney qualify? Angie Bracono, KCTV5 News. An evil monster is how the family of victims describe Robert Courtney. You can hear more about why they'll never forgive him in extended interviews, and you can watch our complete documentary online. Just visit the link that you see on your screen right now, or you can visit KCTV5.com and then click on the KCTV5 Investigates tab.